Good morning and welcome to this presentation, everyone. My name is Arsh Patella. I'm a functional consultant with Western Computer and I will be covering today's presentation. So you can see I'm within Dynamics 365 and let's dive straight in. So you can see that within modules, we have one called asset management and let me collapse all. So we're gonna start by looking at some locations. Locations are absolutely required using the asset management module. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new one and we'll look at some of the setup behind it as we go. Your locations can be defined however you define them. So I'm gonna set one up called CAL for my Calgary campus. And I'm not going to put a parent. So what I'm defining as my highest level location is an entire campus. Every location must belong to a type. So you can see we have area line plant and this is a testing environment. So we have some others going on in here, but I'm gonna define this as an area. So what is a functional location? Well, let's drill down in and take a look. One of the things it defines is the life cycle, and we'll drill into that in just a second. Let me hit new here so we can get my full list. This multiple assets allows you to say, will a location be allowed to have more than one asset? So for example, if you defined your line to be just one physical asset, you could check that to no, saying this location is gonna constitute one asset. However, in my world, a line is made up of multiple machines. And so as a result, I'm putting in multiple assets. You can also check this update asset dimension. What this means is when you install an asset or when you move it to a new location, the financial dimensions will automatically get updated, yes or no. Down below, we see we have asset types. And what this says is what types of assets are allowed to be installed at such a location type. So on my line, I can install an air knife, a blender, or a filter bag. I cannot install an air conditioner, for example. That can go as part of my plant, but it can't go on my line because that's not actually part of my manufacturing. And so you can choose to define that just as a set of controls. You don't have to, as you can see on my plant and in my area, they are completely wide open. So I'm allowing my user's discretion to make sure they're doing it correctly. Further down below, we have maintenance plans. Maintenance plans are part of the preventative maintenance, but a maintenance plan is fairly useful. It allows you to specify things like, I want to send an inspection every two weeks, regardless of whether anything's broken down or not. And so that can be defined there. You can do some attributes, and then you have permitted types. And the permitted type is fairly useful. What this says is, within this specific type of location, what can I choose to define underneath it? So within an area, I can choose to have a sub area or I can choose to have a plant. I cannot define a line directly into an area. So I can't make my manufacturing line directly in my Calgary campus. I have to first build a plant and then I can install a line. So again, it's just another piece of control that you have available to you. And the last thing I wanted to cover was this life cycle. So if I drill in a little bit further, you can see that my functional location can have up to three states. It can be new, active, and ended. But what does that mean? Let me open up another tab and show you what all of those will entail. So if I go back into my module and under setup, I'm going to go to functional locations and say life cycle states. So note that this is a user defined list. You can create your own set of states, whatever makes the most sense for your organization. So when we're in a new state, at that time, my location is not active, meaning I cannot be creating new assets there and I can't be doing anything else. However, I am allowed to rename and I am allowed to delete the location. Once it's active, I can create my assets, I can install, this is a fully useful asset location. I, at this point, however, can no longer rename it. And then finally, ended, and we go back there. So this defines what is allowed during each state. And so if I go back to my life cycle, you can see I have these three states. It's defined in this order. And these are my updates. So when I'm in a new status, I can move to active, but I can't move to ended. When I'm in active, I can move to ended. And once I'm ended, I'm completely done. I can't change it. If you ever find out that you ended a location prematurely, you can always come here, toggle this, and then toggle it back. So that is your life cycle state. And that is fairly important to set up. But once you have that, let's go ahead and create our locations. 
So I have my Calgary campus. I'm not defining any parent. And I say this is of type area. So that's created. And if I open up my location here, you can see at the moment we don't have any installed assets and that's perfectly fine. And we can also choose to define maintenance plans by the location. So for example, maybe my areas have a once a quarter inspection, but because this particular location is more important, I can make that monthly and maintenance rounds similar to maintenance plans. You can also choose to put in workers. So who works specifically in this location? This can be useful if you do automatic scheduling of your work orders. You don't want to schedule somebody who lives across the country to come work on a work order in this specific location. And then finally, we have our financial dimensions, which I will just leave blank at the moment. You can see up here, I have the ability to rename this. I can choose to put in a site warehouse and currently it's in the new status. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a building. So I'm gonna call this Cal-01 and I'll say this is my building one, or you know what, I'll call this my office building in Calgary campus. My parent is Cal, and you can see down below, my option to pick either test or line is gone because my parent is an area. I'm gonna call this plant. In this environment, plant basically just means building. I'll create a second building, so I can call this one 202 and I'll call this production facility in Calgary campus. This will also be of type, and in this case, my parent is still just Cal, and so this will be another plant. And now finally, I'm going to create my first production line. So I'm gonna say line one in Calgary, and my parent is going to be Cal-02 because this is my production facility. And in this case, I'm going to choose line. So what you see is I have a hierarchical nature of my locations. So at the very top, I have an area. Underneath, I have two buildings. And one of my buildings has a line underneath. And now we can choose to define assets into any one of those individual locations. So that is the life of my functional locations. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of these into the active status. You can see they're all new right now, meaning I wouldn't be able to install any assets at these locations, but I am going to move them all into the active status. The reason you'd want to set something up in the new status, maybe you're in the process of acquiring a new plant or you're building your new building, so you want to create it so the record exists, but you don't want to actually start using it yet. So those are your functional locations.